हेलो फ्रेंड मेरा नाम सत्य कुमार फोटोशॉप एडिक्टर है आप आप मेरे चैनल को सब्सक्राइब करेंगे आपको बहुत सारे फोटोशॉप ट्यूटोरियल मिलेंगे थैंक यू थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग एंड सब्सक्राइब फॉर यूट्यूब and what we want to do is we want to isolate this black area here we can of course create a selection around the black area to isolate it but i like working with vectors better because they give you smaller file sizes and they're easier to edit so we're going to create a vector around the frame so i'm going to press z on the keyboard what we want to do is we want to isolate not letting go of it so we're going to zoom in to the back corner here and release the z key it'll bring you back to the pen tool which i had selected Make sure that you have shape on the options panel on the drop down. Click on one corner and click on the next. Hold the space bar, pan down, click on the bottom right corner and then click on the bottom left corner. I'm going to hold the space bar again, click and drag to pan up and complete that path. Now the color of the shape really doesn't matter, so I'm just going to make it red just so that you can see it. Red. What I'm going to do now is enable the layer of the snowboarder. I'm going to click and drag her up to the top of the layers panel. And I'm also going to double tap here on the zoom tool just so we can see the image at 100%. And actually, now that I'm looking at it at 100%, I'm actually going to right click on it and choose fit on screen so that I can see the entire composition. Then I'm going to press Ctrl J, Command J and the Mac to duplicate. So now I have two copies. I'm going to disable the one on the top by clicking on this eye icon and the one on the bottom here. I'm going to clip to the shape below it. So with that layer selected, I'm going to press Ctrl, Alt, G, Command, Option, G on the back. Then I'm going to enable the layer right above that. And Now that I have the selection active around the snowboarder, I'm going to select that top layer and click on the layer mask icon to create a mask around the snowboarder. So what I'm going to do now is click on this top layer, hold shift and click on the layer below it so they're both selected. And I'm going to click on this little chain link icon here to link those two layers. What that allows you to do is when you move one of those layers with the move tool, it moves both. And they can be in different groups and they can be separated so that allows us those layers together. What I'm going to do now is press Ctrl T, Command T to transform to scale this and adjust it accordingly. If you can't see the corner handles that you want to click and drag on, you can press Ctrl 0, that's Command 0 on the Mac, for the bird's eye view that allows you to see all four corner handles. Then I'm going to click and drag on this one here to scale it down by holding Shift, Alt, that's Shift, Option on the Mac. Now at this point, we can go back and adjust the layer mask if we need to. So I'm going to zoom in just so we can see the areas that we can work on. So we need to work on this area and then the blue outline around her body. So we can adjust that by clicking on the layer mask in the properties panel. You can click on mask edge. If you don't see the properties panel, you can go into window, properties. Click on mask edge and then maybe shift the edge with a negative value and see how that's adjusted. So and keep adjusting it and making sure that that line is gone but we don't lose any detail that we want to keep. Also, with this brush select that I can click and drag here on the hair and hopefully we'll get a better selection. So now I didn't do that good of a job here so I'm just gonna leave it like this for now and then I can come back with the brush tool and fix that in a moment. So I'm gonna press OK, click on the brush tool, paint with white in areas that I want to keep. So I'm just gonna I'm selecting some of the sky but that's okay I'm gonna get rid of that by pressing X on the keyboard which swaps the foreground and background color and with black I'm gonna paint on that layer mask to get rid of the sky here everything is masked out accordingly and in most of these areas everything seems to be okay I know we gotta work on this area here and like I said I'll do that up from them with a the tutorial and you can see my final result but for now we'll just leave it as it is be on the keyboard, right click, and choose the screen. And what we're going to work on now is extra elements that are going to help our composite look much more realistic and much more interesting. 
So from the Adobe Stock Library, I downloaded two elements we're gonna use. We're gonna use this shovel with the snow, so let me just double click on that to open that up. And by the way, the links to these files are on the description. You have to download them from Adobe Stock. They're not free, but you can use a watermark preview to practice on. So I would recommend you doing that just so that you can have a way to practice and learn. So the first thing I gotta do is get rid of the shovel. I'm gonna click on the lasso tool. I'm gonna make a selection around the shovel. And as you can see, it's not very accurate. It's okay. Then I can hold shift and backspace. Or you can go into edit, fill to bring up the fill menu under contents choose content aware and press ok and photoshop will fill in those pixels and make the shovel disappear i'm going to press ctrl d command d in the mac to deselect and this is what we're going to work with the first thing that we need to do is mask out the snow from the ground so i'm going to go into the channels panel and i'm going to look for the channel that's got the most contrast in this case the blue channel i'm going to click and drag currently my foreground color to fill with the foreground color you can hold alt Backspace option, backspace on the Mac. Then Control D, Command D on the Mac to deselect. Now we gotta work on this bottom part. There's a feature in Photoshop called Apply Image. If you go into Image, Apply Image, what Apply Image allows you to do is to take an image and apply it onto itself using a blend mode. In this case, we're taking the blue copy, applying the screen blend mode onto itself. So notice what happens here on the snow on the edge. It, essentially turns white, which is what we want. You could also, of course, apply a multiply blend mode and it'll give you a different result. In this case, I think I'm gonna go with screen and then I'll just work on the edges in the next step. So I'm gonna press OK. And what I'm gonna do now is go into image, adjustment, levels, and bring the levels to the right, the dark values to the right. So we have more contrast between the snow and the ground. And remember, we're gonna be making a selection. Anything that's white in this screen will be selected. Anything that is black will be deselected. So I'm gonna drag this one over to the left a little bit. I'm looking at the edges here. And maybe drag this one to the left as well. And press OK. Now, what I'm gonna do now is click on the brush tool. Select black as my foreground color so I can paint with black. I my brush by clicking on the right bracket key on the keyboard. And I'm just gonna paint black and again you don't have to be very accurate as long as you get close enough it should be good and I'm just painting these pixels away which represent floor the tones a little bit and press ok so this selection looks like it'll work so I'm gonna press control command on the Mac click on the blue copy icon to make a selection around it go back into the layers panel on the background layer, which is the only layer that we have in this document, I'm gonna click on the new layer mask icon and notice now I think we're gonna be able to get away with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna simply click on the layer, select the move tool, click and drag the layer over onto the other file by hovering over the tab, and then coming down and releasing and there's our file. It's a really big layer, so we're gonna need to scale it down. Control T, Command T on the Mac, to transform. We can't see the corner handles, so I'm gonna press Control Zero, Command Zero on the Mac. There's the corner handles, and now I'm gonna adjust them accordingly. I'm holding Shift as I'm clicking on these corner handles to keep the file constrained. The angle is not really matching my scene, so I'm gonna right-click on it and choose Flip Horizontal. And from here, I can match the scene a little bit better, and I can even distort it if I want to. Maybe right click on it and choose distort just to get a better perspective of the scene that we're working with. Maybe something like this. And press enter when you're done. Now that we have this file in place, I'm going to press V on the keyboard. Right click, fit to screen. Then I'm going to press V on the keyboard to get the move tool. And maybe I can move it around if I need to. And I'm going to click on the new group icon to create a new group. I'm going to click and drag this snow layer in there. I'm going to collapse it and now it's in that group. Next I'm going to hold Alt, Option on the Mac and click on the layer mask icon to create a black layer mask which hides everything. Then with the brush tool I can paint transform, that's Command T in the Mac, Control Zero, 
Command 0 on the Mac and scale this one in as well. And I'm gonna zoom in and rotate this one into position, maybe right about here or so. But I want this one to be in the back. So I'm gonna click and drag this one and place it way back here. And I'm gonna press V to select the move tool and I'm gonna move it around just to fit it into position. So maybe something like this. And actually I just realized that I made a mistake. Notice how this element gets cut up right in this area. That's because this element needs to be right here. It needs to be in between the layer that's popping out of the subject and the layer that is clipped to the vector. So right in between those two. So now the snow follows through into the frame. Now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to work with shadows. So first I have the snow here on the table. It needs a shadow. So I'm going to open up this group. So we'll click on the snow layer here. And click on drop shadow. Notice a little drop shadow there. You can use the settings that I have here if you like. Notice that I'm not using black. I'm using a dark burgundy color. Which is similar to that color you see right there. Right under the frame brought the intensity down to about 25% using multiply and notice the light is coming from the right the light on her face is coming from the right and so is the light hitting the frame so you sort of want to match that with the shadow so the shadows will be on the left side sort of like here behind the frame so this is what this is showing so if I were to bring it up to 100% this is what that looks like obviously that's too much so leave it at about 25% or so and what I'm going to do now is right above this ETC it's not very accurate it's okay but it'll give you a different result in this case I think I'm going to go with screen and then I'll just work on the edges in the next step so I'm going to press OK and what I'm going to do now is go into image adjustment levels and bring the levels to the right the dark values to the right so we have more contrast between the snow and the ground and remember, we're going to be making a selection. Anything that's white in this screen will be selected. Anything that is black will be deselected. So I'm going to drag this one over to the left a little bit. I'm looking at the edges here. And maybe drag this one to the left as well. And press OK. Now, what I'm going to do now is click on the brush tool. Select black as my foreground color so I can paint with black. I'm going to increase the size of my brush by clicking on the right bracket key on the keyboard. And I'm just going to paint with black. And again, you don't have to be very accurate. As long as you get close enough, it should be good. And I'm just painting these pixels away, which represent the floor. And once again, I'm going to go into Image, Adjustment, Levels, and darken up some of the darker pixels and brighten up the mid-tones a little bit. Seeing a little bit better. And I can even distort it if I want to. Maybe right click on it and choose to start just to get a better perspective of the scene that we're working with. Maybe something like this. And press enter when you're done. Now that we have this file in place, I'm going to press V on the keyboard. Right click. Fit to screen. Then I'm going to press V on the keyboard to get the move tool. And maybe I can move it around if I need to. And I'm going to click on the new group icon to create a new group. I'm going to click and drag this snow layer in there. I'm going to collapse it and now it's in that group. Next I'm going to hold Alt, Option on the Mac and click on the layer mask icon to create a black layer mask which hides everything. Then with the brush tool I can paint with white the size of my brush. So I'm just painting with white just bringing in some of that snow. And if you make a mistake, you can press X on the keyboard to paint it black and maybe shape snow a little bit better. Maybe something like that. What we're going to do now is work with different elements. So I'm going to open up the libraries panel and I'm going to open up this file here, which is these snow elements that were also downloaded from Adobe Stock. By the way, if you don't have Photoshop CC, you won't have the libraries panel, but you can still download the watermark previews onto your desktop and bring them into Photoshop as you would any other image. So you can still work with the previews. So 
So what I'm going to do now is just select one of these elements and bring it over to the file that I'm working with. So I'm going to click on the lasso tool and I'm going to select this element first. So I'm going to select it, go to edit and copy or you can press Control C. I'm going to deselect that element, Control D, Command D on the Mac. Go back into the file that we're working with and I'm going to paste it here, Control V, Command V on the Mac and there it is. As you can see,